It's me, the the king of low effort content. Hello, I'm here to make money off of you by barely doing anything. Hello everyone, my name is Kai and welcome back to my channel. This is an update video on my Spider-Man TV show that I pitched a couple of days ago. Days? No, I'm I'm so logged out of time. I, I announced this like over two months ago or something like that. Anyway, I'm making my own Spider-Man TV show. Um, I'm in the middle of writing a video uh, about the suits in Mi Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I know that video is going to take a little bit because the script for it is actually kind of long. So I wanted to make a quick little update video and give you guys something that I know you wanted. An update on how my show's going. I have a bunch of art to show you in this video, more sketches, more characters that weren't in the previous video. Um, a lot of these I've been drawing on live stream with my fans. So if you want to go to my channel and turn on the notification button, it will alert you every time I do a live stream and you will know when I am live. And most of the time I go live, I'm working on the show. So if you want to see that, you can turn on the notification bell. Here is the, uh, here's some concept art of Spider-Man fighting Electro with Rhino. Um, I wanted to draw some concept art of a really dynamic piece. This is obviously, uh, the background for this is obviously a map in Gmod. I, I usually use Gmod maps for my drawings to, first of all, help me speed up the process because if I sat there drawing backgrounds, it would take me much longer to do everything. I am debating whether or not I should start drawing my own backgrounds for my show, but I... You'll just have to wait to see till the show comes out to see my decision. Um, anyway, uh, I guess I'll kind of explain, I guess, the context for this drawing, even though I think it's pretty clear. Spider-Man is fighting the Rhino... Or no, Spider-Man is fighting Electro on a car that is attached to the Rhino. I don't necessarily have a context for this drawing yet. I don't have a story around the drawing yet. I just know that it's super rambunctious. It's super... I want this to be like a very high action, high mobility fight if I were to put this in the show. There are some difficulties that, that would come up from animating it because, I, of course, I would have to find a way to ha animate the car in real time. But it's a 3D object, so I'm not sure how I would do that. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you this drawing. Electro, this is not the final design for Electro, by the way. You will see the final design for Electro in this video but this what i what you see on screen is not it let's keep going all right this is 2099 this actually has two variants there's a blue variant and then there's a purple variant i really wanted to make him all blue for the show because if you've watched some of my videos you know that i prefer 29 to be if you've watched some of my videos you'll know that i prefer 2099 to be fully blue but I wanted to, of course, throw comic fans a bone by making him accurate to how he was shaded in the comics. And the reason why there's two different variants of this drawing is because there's one for him at night, which is the blue version. And then you have the purple version, which is for the daytime. Uh, I didn't do much changes to his costume at all, except for adding red spikes that go up his boot. But that's all I changed. And honestly, I don't think it's that unfaithful to the design. So. If anybody wants to get mad at me for that, they can get mad at nothing, which they will be if they get mad at me for that. Next up, we have Black Panther. This was another character that, while I was live streaming, was heavily suggested for me to draw. Um, I didn't want to have him be the or skin tight cat suit on a man. I wanted to give him his classic cloak from the comics with the cape and everything. I don't know why I gave him yellow eyes. I. I just don't know. I, I thought it looked cool, so I did it, and chat didn't stop me. So, yeah. Here's how Black Panther looks. I don't know if he's even going to appear in the show at all. A lot of these drawings, I'm not sure if these characters will appear. Like, 2099? Yeah, I have an episode planned where he appears, but I don't have any major episodes with any other Avengers yet that are confirmed to happen. They're all just ideas rattling around in my brain. And if those ideas happen to include that set Avenger, then they will show up. 
but if I draw a character, it's not guaranteed that they're going to make it in the show. I'm just drawing them so that I can sort of get to being more familiar with the art style I've made for this show. And it's sort of like an exercise. I'm exercising the style of this show. All right, next up we have some full concept art with a background and everything that isn't just a character sketch. This is Spider-Man meeting 2099. Uh, the context for this clip is that he's just wearing the black suit um, when he meets him. Uh, the black suit isn't evil at the moment. Peter is just casually wearing it. I see a lot of Spider-Man media that wants to put Peter in the black suit just for the original black suit story, which is Peter puts on the black suit, he realizes it's bad, and then he takes it off and that's it. But in the comics, there was a long time where Peter just casually wore it. It was a part of his time as Spider-Man. So I wanted to incorporate that into Peter's past. Um, this is not the present day show setting. This is a flashback. I want to do a lot of flashback episodes where I go back to Peter at a younger state of being Spider-Man. Not every episode is going to take place in the current setting of the show. There's going to be some flashback episodes. There's going to be some... I just realized I only gave six legs to the spider in the in the top left corner of the drawing. I'm a, I'm a failure! Yeah, but anyway, uh, this is going to be a flashback episode, and Peter is not going to be actively struggling to take off the black suit. It is just going to be the suit that he happens to be wearing. It doesn't have anything to do with the plot. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. Peter is just wearing the black suit to wear the black suit. If you think that's a waste of the black suit, read a comic book. Here's Moon Knight. Uh, I got a lot of suggestions to do Moon Knight and draw Moon Knight for my show while live. In fact, I still get, I still get suggestions for people begging me to draw Moon Knight even though I've already drawn him. So hopefully me showing him off today will be the end of people asking me for characters that I've already drawn. Um, I don't really have any plans for Moon Knight. If I do end up implementing Moon Knight into the show, I am going to make sure that he is comic accurate to the source material. Um, I will do this by reaching out to Moon Knight fans and seeing what, you know, Moon Knight fans have to say about the character. I want, I I'll just make sure I do my research to get this character right because I know the most recent adaptation of him did him kind of dirty and i know that if i want my show to be comic accurate i obviously can't do what the mcu did and i wouldn't want to anyway all right let's look at kane um for all of you kane heads that are out there you'll notice that kane's design is a little different um he has black gloves and black boots some of you might be wondering Kai, why did you desecrate Kane's classic design and what is your address so I can kill you? I'm not going to give you my address. I will tell you why I changed it. It's so that I could reference the real life Kane cosplay that I made, which was me changing the design so that it had gloves and boots that were fully black because I thought they just balanced out the amount of black on the costume and I thought it'd be a really cool addition and plus I think it looks pretty good too, so... I don't really have any issues with it, but here's Kane. Again, I don't really have any plans for Kane. I think from now on in this video, I'll just tell you if I have plans for said character when I show you them. Uh, here's a quick little promo drawing I did for the release of the Across the Spider-Verse trailer. There's nothing really special in this drawing, although there is a, a quick little view of Miles Morales's back. I never drew the back of Miles Morales when I drew him, so I had no clue how I was going to draw him and what I was going to put on his back. And, you know, after sitting there and thinking about it for a while and trying to work a spider into the design of his costume, I figured that instead I would just pay homage to another huge element of the character, which is the 42. And I thought, you know, he's already wearing a jacket. He's already wearing, like not a traditional superhero costume so i figured i would just continue that by just adding a big 42 onto his back so after drawing a lot of these characters and pitching them i realized that there's one character i only drew one time during my last video and it was peter parker 
I didn't draw Peter Parker a lot, and I thought that was a major fault on my part. So I ended up drawing him. Here he is. Um, he's a little older than usual, um, of course, because he is like 29 or or he's like 25 to 30 in my show. This is this is an older Peter because he's lived so he's lived through so much of being Spider-Man. And there's a lot of history that I want to include. So I thought that having him be at an older age was only appropriate. Like I couldn't have him be like 25 or anything like that. Like I want this Peter age wise to for it to be very evident that he's been through most of his career as Spider-Man. And now he's just at a point where I as a writer can just have fun with all of these events from his past and I can bring them back to the present day. I can flash back to them. We're at a point, I'm at prime Spidey right now. This is prime Spidey. He's been through a lot. He's seen the death of Gwen Stacy. He's been through most of his major life events and everything. He's seen it all. And I can capitalize on that by going into his past and bringing those like issues he's gone through back into the present day. But anyway, this is Peter. Um, I actually released this art to the community tab on my channel and I heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I obviously don't want him to be super glum and grim all the time. I just want him to sort of appear that way when he's out of costume and then when you get him as Spider-Man he's all, he's just classic Spidey, he's funny, he's, he's kind of peppy, he's that Spider-Man you all know and love, but when he's not wearing the costume he's just sort of like, meh, there's a duality between these two characters and I want that to be very clear. And of course you've got him, uh, relaying his his mission statement over here and one thing i want about one thing i really want for this peter parker is i want him to be such a morally righteous kind of guy like he's that guy that like will not shut up about doing the right thing he is always trying to push himself into doing the right thing i want to base it a lot off of josh keaton's take on the character specifically in spider-man edge of time i think some of the segments where josh keaton i'll play some clips he took off again yeah if only you do the same o'hara if you don't get that i can't turn my back on danger no matter what the cost then you've got no business calling yourself spider-man but some of the parts where josh keaton is like if you don't understand that i can't turn my back on danger then you have no business calling yourself spider-man i thought that those moments where he really was preaching about like what you need to do as Spider-Man, what is important to being Spider-Man is one of those things that I want to heavily implement into my character. This is Peter Parker. He is forever traumatized by an event that happened to him because of his lack of responsibility. And now he's going to spend the rest of his life being as responsible as possible. And I want that to be very evident in the way that he talks about being Spider-Man and stuff. And I'm not a writer, so I hope I don't make it shitty. Anyway, here's Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Um, I didn't really have any specific ideas for her. I just wanted to draw Miss Marvel. And she's kind of like a chunky, nerdy girl, which I think is accurate to her as a character. Um, specifically, the part about her being chunky. I know she's not that chunky in the comics, but I thought that having her be chunky sort of fits in with her struggle as a hero which is her not being happy with her being a superhero she wants to be someone else in the original comics she just wanted to be carol danvers but her arc is that she realizes that she's not carol danvers she's herself and she comes to accept that and i think having her be a little chunky and working that in with body positivity i think works really well for this character again i don't know if she's gonna show up i have no plans for her to show up i do think having her do a solo team up episode with peter would be fun but i have no clue if i'm gonna do so also i really like the the champions the little team with miles morales nova and miss marvel and other characters i want to include them but i know next to nothing about those characters so i'm a little hesitant to do so and if i do end up including them i will make sure that I do my research. Gwenpool! Gwenpool is actually one of the only characters that I've drawn that I've read 
some of the source material for. I have Gwenpool comics, and I thought they were really good. I thought they were really fun, and I enjoyed them a lot. Um, I think she's a really fun character, um, and she's a really cool spin on the idea of Deadpool, where she takes that fourth wall breaking to a whole nother level, and I really enjoy that about her. Of course, I ended up adding Jeff the Landshark because Jeff the Landshark is an essential part of this character, I guess, now. Um, and he's got a lot of fans, so I wanted to include him. I don't really have anything particular to say about Gwenpool. Um, she's Gwenpool. Very good. Also, something I wanted to uh, talk about. I've drawn a lot of females for this show. And something I really want to make sure I do is I want to make sure every single female body looks different. Um, I've watched a lot of Batman the Animated Series recently. And looking at all the women in that show, especially like in the second era of the art style of the show, really made me realize how important it is to have these motherfuckers look different. Because if you just chopped their heads off and you had the silhouette, they would all look exactly the same. So, I want to make sure that I include lots of different body types so that I, as an artist, can, you know, practice drawing different types of women in this style. And just because I think it's more realistic. Like, aside from the, oh, I think everybody should be able to see themselves in the show, I think it's fucking realistic to have it so that several women appear and they don't all look exactly the same. I know a lot, I know some people might get triggered because, oh, you're doing body positivity, you're doing bo body positivity. I'm painting a picture of the real world. The real world does not have every woman look like fucking Bruce Tim woman drawings. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I want to make sure every female looks different. So that's what I'm doing. This is MJ. I've redrew MJ because I was not happy with her. I was not happy with the way she looked. I ended up redoing her from the ground up. I made her bigger. I made her less skinny and I made her less cartoony looking. Um, I wanted her to be comparable in size to Peter. And here she is. That's MJ. I don't really have anything to say about her. Um, I debated on whether or not I should give her the heart Spider-Man shirt, but I thought that like, it's an iconic part of her character and you know, she loves her boyfriend and I'm going to be trying my hardest to make sure that that is not her only character trait, of course. And I'm going to be making it so that MJ actually has character and she's doing her own things. She's an actor. She's a model. She's all these different things. She's not just Spider-Man's girlfriend. And I want her to, I want that to be very clear whenever she shows up. This is Spider-Ham. This was a character I had always had rattling around in my head to draw for the show. I was like, you know, I fucking love Spider-Ham and I'm going to fucking draw him. So here he is. Um, I don't really have anything to say about him. Um, I wanted to keep his color palette kind of strict, and by that I mean only using reds and blues and blacks, and that's it. Unlike Peter, where his design uses a lot of dark blue and like muted blue for the shine on the lenses, Spider Ham is a different case. Spider Ham, I just wanted him to look extremely simple and extremely cartoony. I wanted him to have like a huge range of emotion, like a usual cartoon character. I thought what they did with him in Spider-Verse was amazing, where they had him pulling out anvils and hammers and stuff. I thought that was perfect, and I wanted to reuse that idea in my character, and I want to look at a lot of old-timey cartoons like Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Courage the Cowardly Dog, specifically Courage, because Courage looks very similar to what I'd want to do with him as like in terms of expressions and moving his face and stuff I really like what they do with courage and I want to carry that over to my version of Peter Porker spider ham this is the vulture that's it this is just a PNG drawing of the vulture let's let's take a look, closer look at him his head is very oddly shaped and you'll see that later in the video and that's because I wanted his head to be kind of shaped like a bird's face the way his big ass nose comes down all the way from the top, I wanted it to look like a beak. And of course I wanted him to look very old. That's all I wanted to do with his face. I wanted him to have kind of a bird faced silhouette, but he's also old as fuck. And yeah, that's Vulture. Here's a crossover drawing. 
this isn't an episode that I plan to do, but I do think it'd be really fun to do crossover episodes with different properties with my character because he's... I'm not bound by any law. You hear me? No copyright law in the universe can stop me. So if I want to draw my Spider-Man with Batman, I'm going to do that. I don't really have any... Uh, I don't really have anything to say about this drawing. It's just my Spider-Man with, with Butt-Man, if you will. Although I do want to say, one of my biggest inspirations for this show has ironically been Batman the Animated Series, and I'm going to explain why. Batman the Animated Series is really inspiring of a show to me because just watching it, it's very clear that there's a love and understanding for the character within the walls of that show. And I think... For me, going through and watching a show that has love for the character, respect for the lore, and has such a rich art style to it is something I want to emulate with my show. And I think looking over at the competition to see what they're doing is a great idea. And I think trying my hardest to emulate some of the best features of that show, ones that aren't uniquely Batman, is a good idea. Like. I remember there was one episode in the early first episodes of the show where a bunch of villains meet up at a bar and they talk about how Batman foiled their great plan. And I thought, that's such a good idea for an episode that could be used for any superhero. Like, fucking Superman's enemies go to a bar, they talk about how Superman beat their ass. Spider-Man, same thing for Spider-Man. And I'm not a legal... I'm not, I'm not legally bound to any laws, so I can just rip off the concept of another fucking episode of a show and use it in my own. DC and Marvel do that shit all the time, okay? Aquaman is a ripoff of Namor, all right? So I don't want to hear shit. And plus, it's a good idea. It's a good fucking idea, okay? And of course, I'm obviously going to pay homage to that episode within mine, so I don't really feel terrible about ripping off the plot of it. So here is sort of an experimental drawing for me. This is like something I imagine that Peter put together. It's not like canonly something Peter made, but it's something I could imagine him writing. It's sort of a just notes. He takes notes on his villains, I guess. And of course you have every villain here. This is the Sinister Six lineup. It's the classic Sinister Six lineup. You've got Dr. Octopus, we covered him in the last video, and here's Electro. This is the redesign of Electro. Um, I gave him like a little chin patch that comes up from his mask. I changed the design of the big Electro bolt on his head to make it easier to draw, and because I still think it looks enough like lightning for it to be passable. So, I like it, and if anybody else doesn't like it, fuck you, I hate you, I'm kidding. Um, Rhino, I don't know if this is going to be the final side profile for Rhino. Some of you might remember how I drew Rhino in the first episode of this, I guess, installment. And you couldn't see much of his face. And I don't know if I'm too happy with how I drew Rhino here. I might end up going back and changing it. But for now, this is how Rhino looks. Of course, you got Mysterio, um, Vulture. Here, you can really see more of Vulture's bird-like features where like he's got this big ass nose and you can only see his eyes from one fucking side when he turns to the right a little bit. Of course you got Craven. Uh, I wanted to make him look like a caveman because he's this big nature guy. He spends a lot of his time in nature. So I thought giving him like a caveman forehead and, and just more simplistic hair, I thought would be really fitting of the character because He's a fucking, like, he's a nature guy. I think making him a caveman is a fun addition to the design. Here's a drawing of J. Jonah Jameson. Um, I had a lot of fun drawing Jameson because he's a very, naturally, he's a very expressive character. One of my biggest worries about this version, or one of my biggest worries about, like, J. Jonah Jameson in my show in general, is that I'm not going to be able to properly get a voice for him like i don't think there's anybody out there that can do a jameson voice that i think i'd be happy with i'm not currently looking for auditions for j jonah jameson 
But if you think that you can do a J. Jonah Jameson voice, first of all, you have to be over the age of 18, okay? I know a lot of you young fans want to tap in and you want to engage with the show by any means possible. Don't, don't give me your J. Jonah Jameson voice if you haven't hit puberty yet, please. Here's the submission link where you can send in your auditions for my characters. And if I like your voice, I'll reach out. But I'm just warning you, there's a very low success rate. I've only reached out to one guy whose voices that I've really liked for my show. But here's Jameson. Here's Sandman. If, if, you, if you recognize the pose, you'll know that he's posing like John Cena. And that's because I think John Cena would be a perfect casting of Sandman. Um, I don't know. I just kind of want him to look like John Cena. I thought that'd be really funny. That's like my only note about my Sandman design is that he looks like a John Cena and I think that's funny. Spider Gwen, I have no plans to include Spider Gwen in my show because Gwen is dead. And I don't really wanna to do too much multiversal hijinks. I've seen a lot of fans in the community just get really tired of like this overabundance of Spider-Verse content. So if I do multiverse content, it's gonna be like once every like 14, episodes if i even get that far to 14 episodes man that's a lot of fucking episodes a lot of again a lot of these drawings are just me drawing these characters so that i can experiment with my art style and so that i would know what they look like if they do show up but this is gwen uh i wanted to incorporate some green into her design you know some dark turquoise to sort of blend in with her boots and give her top half more of a contrast from the bottom half her top half is pink and white, and her bottom half is turquoise and black. And I think those are two very contrasting color palettes that come together in this suit. And I really like it, so this is my Gwen design. There are only two more drawings for me to show, and here they are. This drawing was for an idea I had for... What if I just did an episode that was very similar to the plot of movies that we've seen about Spider-Man? Specifically ones that people aren't very happy with the way the character is portrayed. Specifically, Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man. I think if I can make an episode where I reuse like the three kind of essential characters to the plot, which are Vulture, Iron Man, and Spider-Man, and make a plot that's kind of similar and you put the characters in similar places but peter is more comic accurate so you'll see him do different things than tom holland spider-man would do i think that genuinely be a fun idea a lot of my show is just me being inspired by other things so you will see a lot of like rehashing of old ideas but with new twists to them i mean if spectacular spider-man can get away with redoing Raimi shots, I can get away with doing a little bit of, of idea altering. I know, I know some people might get mad at me because they want fresh and new ideas only, but if I sorely do fresh and new ideas, I can't guarantee you that I can write a good show because again, I'm not a fucking writer and I might be a little in over my fucking head on this one, but this is, if you want a good quality product, this is what you gotta have and and it's a fun idea it's a fun idea i think this is the last drawing i have to show it's spider-man back in his earlier years quitting there's nothing more to this drawing he is simply just very upset by something that has happened to him as spider-man i don't i don't know what it is i don't have any context for this drawing other than that he's quitting but he says that's it I won't do this to myself anymore. I am Spider-Man no more. And he quits. He's very angry. He's got his arms up to the sky and he's he's pissed off and he's mad and stuff. Yeah. Uh I want I'm really happy with how I drew his classic outfit. I don't remember if this is particularly accurate to how I drew it in that one drawing, but that one drawing fucking sucks it's the worst of all those suit drawings that i did this drawing of it i like way more and it's way better so yeah here he is um spider-man all right that's about all of the things i have to show you 
I know this is a longer video and I know this might not reach outside of my subscriber base because the original video was like, oh, I'm making my spider show. And this second part is just, oh, here are some updates on my Spider-Man show that you might have heard about. So I feel like people who only have subscribed to me are going to be able to see this video and let alone even watch it to the end. Again, thank you so much for watching. And again, if you want to see me make these things in real time, you can always turn on notifications and you'll be alerted whenever I go live. I only upload like twice a week. So you won't be like spammed with notifications like your notification bar will be fine if you're worried that I'm gonna be blowing up your notifications you're fine unless I'm live streaming because I live stream like back when I could do it because I'm not on break anymore and that's when I would live stream almost every day but yeah I'll only live stream like once in a blue moon now so if you set on your notifications you'll be fine but anyway that's about all I have to say here are the updates for my show. The Miles Morales video on the Miles Morales costumes and the Miles Morales video game is going to be out soon. Thank you all so much for watching. Of course, I will see you all next time. Bye! I'm really trying my hardest on this show. Like, I've... There have been points where I've been, like, kind of unhappy with the way it looks. Like, yesterday I drew a shot for the intro, and when the intro is done, I'm going to just drop that on the channel. And that's going to be- yes, there is an intro for the show, by the way. Once I drop the intro, that's going to be sort of like a trailer, I guess, for the show. It's going to be like a teaser. I'm teasing the trailer, but it's the intro. I don't know. Um, I really hope that people are happy with the intro where it comes out. There are some spots in it that I'm currently fine-tuning. There, are, I know some of you who have probably watched from live streams are a bit... Will we'll notice some differences and some big changes. That's because I haven't been happy with the visuals of it. I've been going back and I've been redoing some of the parts I'm not happy with. And in fact, even if I have time today, I'm going to go back and reanimate some of the parts of the show that I'm not happy with in terms of like visuals. So I'm trying my hardest to guarantee a good and consistent product for you all. Um, and again, thank you all so much for watching. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening through the, through the outro card. Bye.